Hey, what's going on guys? And welcome to our first ever post-launch Cassette Beasts guide video. Now that the game is officially out, the gloves are off and I can go wild with various guides, breakdowns, and all that fun stuff I have planned for the game. Today, we're gonna start things off with some tips and tricks for the game that will seriously give you an edge when it comes to exploring the world of New World. These range from understanding certain systems to a few exploits and everything in between. So I'm pretty excited to dive in. If you are watching this video and don't know what Cassette Beasts is, really quickly, it's basically an open world monster taming RPG with tons of its own unique mechanics and honestly it's really freaking good i put out a review earlier today that you could check out linked below so without further ado make sure to sit back relax and let's dive in number one the capture mechanic all right, so what better way to start things off than to dive into the game's quote-unquote capture mechanic, which differs itself immensely from most monster taming games. Now, do know that I already have a guide put together going more in-depth into this and will be out in a few days, but basically when it comes to capturing, you have to select record, which puts yourself into a vulnerable state. While this recording process takes place, if the monster that you're recording receives damage, the percentage chance of you capturing said monster goes up, and if you receive damage as a human, that percentage goes down. Utilizing moves such as elemental wall or provoke in order to subvert damage from the recording player will allow for maximum catch odds. Furthermore, this is a little bit of a more intermediate tip, but after you complete some of the in-game quests, you will get access to the ability to increase the capture odds via spending an item called fused materials in the ranger's guild. I don't expect you to know much about that and we will touch on fused materials in a minute, but what I want you to know is just keep in mind that there is a way to increase this capture rate beyond just using better cassettes or elemental ones. Number two, overworld abilities. All right, so while we're on the topic of the capture mechanic, or I guess more accurately, the recording mechanic, since you don't actually capture monsters, you transform into them. Uh, but there are certain monsters throughout the world that will allow you to gain special abilities by recording their data. These abilities will allow you to make world traversal much easier and include, but are not limited to, the ability to glide, which you will not be able to miss because it's part of the main story. There's also an ability that allows you to dash, to break through rocks. There's one for swimming, one that allows you to take control of electromagnetism, etc. Now that being being said, I am currently working on a guide that'll go into the locations of the monsters that grant you these special abilities, but for now my biggest advice is just to catch everything you find, because not only will it help with certain side quests, but it'll also increase your chances of finding a monster that has an ability you have yet to get access to. There will be many areas throughout the map that you are walled off from, but in reality you probably just need a special ability to get to it. Number three, currency. All right, so Cassette Beast doesn't have its own standard currency like gold or dollars, but instead has a wide array of different scrap material that can be traded. Example of this include plastic, wood, metal, etc. And different resources can be traded for different things. Like for example, a basic cassette tape will cost you some plastic, while something made of metal will cost you metal. Again, I already have a guide in the works that goes over different ways to collect scrap, but for quick reference, winning battles, completing quests, defeating wild monsters or cassette users, opening chests, etc will all give you scrap and you can even throw away items and your monster tapes themselves in order to increase your scrap pool as well. You can then use this scrap to purchase items like stickers, cassettes, healing items, and everything in between. Number four, avoid trainer battles. Okay, so in Cassette Beast, there is a version of trainers, which I guess you could just call cassette users, since again, you transform into the monsters, but these characters, much like you'd expect from something like Pokemon, have a line of sight, which if you cross, they'll challenge you to a battle. Now, unlike Pokemon, Cassette Beast does have some advanced movement, like jumping and gliding and stuff like that, and this is where I'm kind of going with this. Anytime you find a trainer you don't want to battle, you could literally just jump on their head to get right past them. I'm not sure if this is an intended mechanic or not, but it's honestly hilarious, and I really hope they don't remove it, because it does give you a lot of freedom with how you traverse the map. Number five, rogue fusions. All right, so throughout the map, you'll find these black creatures that actually represent rogue fusion monsters. Rogue fusions are essentially two monsters that have fused in the wild that you must defeat as sort of a mini boss, and you'll gain various loot and stuff like that from doing so. The reason rogue fusions are important is because they drop a very precious material that I mentioned earlier called fusion materials, which can be used as a means to exchange for special upgrades in the Rangers Guild back in the main hub town. These include expanded storage space for items like rewinds, an increase to your capture rate, as I stated previously, a way to make fusions happen more quickly, etc, etc, etc. Rogue fusions will also split up after you defeat them, so you can capture the half fusion parts if there's something there that you don't already have. Number six, 
fusion. Speaking of fusion, fusion itself is a very powerful mechanic present within the game, and in order to access fusion, you must have completed the first mandatory Archangel boss and leveled up your friendship with Kaylee to the first out of five hearts. Once you do that, during combat, you'll notice a fusion meter increasing when you take damage in battle, and once that meter is full, you can access the fusion mechanic by selecting the appropriate button. Fusion monsters share the move pools of both monsters, add the stats together, get both typings, and basically act like a mid-battle evolution if you would. Now again, fusion guides actually coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned. Number seven, Evolution. So Cassepis does actually have its own version of Evolution in the game, which is completely separate from the fusion system. The way it works does have something to do with the way leveling up and experience works, so bear with me for a minute here. But you do have a trainer level, which increases and affects the stats of your various cassettes, and this remains the same regardless of which tapes you're using. That, however, is not the only thing that affects your stats and monsters in battle. Each individual cassette will have its own star level, which acts similarly to your conventional levels, with each battle netting experience getting you close closer to the next star. A cassette can have up to five stars total, and once this is met, you do have the option to evolve them to the next state. Certain cassettes also have branched evolution, allowing for you to pick which evolution you want to quote unquote remaster that cassette to, but we'll talk more about that in our evolution guide that again is also coming out tomorrow. You'll notice a trend with this video. A lot of these tips and tricks are going to be further expanded on, so definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already to get notified when those videos come out. Number eight, elemental walls. All right, I cannot stress the importance of elemental walls enough because they're quite powerful. So basically in the game, there are certain moves that will create what's called a wall, and these walls will have different attributes based on their types. What walls do is block incoming attacks for a set amount of times and or turns, and you'll generally get three stacks of these anytime you use a wall-inducing move. Stickers such as the ability called elemental wall or any of the various wall abilities will activate these attacks, and the main use you'll probably have with it again is the ability called elemental wall, which in and of itself is typeless, which means it'll convert itself to the type of your monster. The type of the wall itself is important because it will affect how it interacts with certain attacks. For example, if a monster has an elemental wall and that's hit by a type that is advantageous to that elemental wall, it'll break right away. But the reason why elemental walls are super important is because they do allow you to absorb massive damage from archangels, which are very powerful enemies within the game. And they also do make it easier to catch monsters. You cannot take damage while behind the wall from conventional means. So if you're recording and have a wall up, you're safe from losing percentage values while catching. Do note that this does take 20% of your HP in order to use and act sort of like substitute from Pokemon, albeit with a few differences. Number nine, Barrel Glitch. Okay, so I'm not even sure if this is intended or if this is just a glitch based on how the game interacts while you're holding stuff, but I have noticed that when you're holding a barrel or any other object for that matter, you will be able to actually double jump on certain surfaces. I'd like to test this more, and I feel like since I'm putting this out there, the devs might actually end up patching it, but until then, you can double jump on top of these breakable rocks, for example, and some lower surfaces. I haven't found anything crazy and sort of game-breaking that results from this, but it will give you an easier way to get to certain areas and still keep that that barrel or box with you. Number 10, Cassette Beasts is not Pokemon. So the final point on this list, and I will sometimes use this point across various monster taming games, is that this game is not Pokemon. And the reason I feel like this is important to state is because everything you know about Pokemon will not apply here. Type matchups don't change damage values, but instead add debuffs and buffs based on the interactions themselves which again, another video plan for that. The evolution mechanic like we showcased earlier is completely unique. Levels are attained by the user of the cassettes themselves rather than the monsters. Fusion is a thing. There's an emphasis on the bond between human characters as opposed to monsters. And the game sort of plays in an open world format, which in many ways does have similarities with the various tasks you have to complete in Scarlet and Violet, for example, but in my opinion is a lot more condensed and lively. Now, this isn't a point to say that Pokemon's bad or better, but just that it's different and you should leave your preconceptions about how the game will play based on what you experienced with Pokemon at the door, because this truly is its own game. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the tips and tricks. Depending on your guys' feedback, I might actually want to put a second video out, since there are a lot of mechanics that go into Cassette Beast that, again, set it apart from other monster taming games. That being said, if you are a fan of Cassette Beast and want to stay up to date with all the latest news, updates, guides, etc., definitely subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that we also cover all things monster taming, and this is the go-to place for monster taming content. You can check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon as well. And just wanted to quickly say special thanks to our patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Dark Persona Exodus, and Candy Morency. And we'll see you next time. Peace.